What if a tank could destroy its enemy before they even saw it coming? Yes, you heard it right. That's China's Type 100, the world's first beyond visual range main battle tank. On October 5, 2025, Chinese state media quietly released footage from an undisclosed military testing ground. At first glance, it appeared like a typical tank exercise, but experts immediately noticed something different. The tank in the footage bore no resemblance to the familiar Type 99A or the newer Type 96B. Instead, it had a sleek futuristic design, low radar cross-section, and an unusual turret shape, housing a new active protection system unlike anything seen before. The accompanying caption read, Introducing the Type 100, the world's first digitalized AI-integrated main battle tank capable of beyond visual range engagement. It was a short sentence, but it sent shockwaves through global defense communities. For the first time, a tank claimed BVR capability, a term until now reserved for air combat. The story of the Type 100 begins years earlier, in the bloody lessons of Ukraine. Chinese strategists closely studied how Russian armored columns were decimated by drones, precision artillery, and Western anti-tank missiles. They realized that traditional armor, even heavy tanks like the T-90 or Leopard 2, were becoming increasingly vulnerable. The conclusion was clear. The age of C-AIM shoot tanks was over. The next generation had to detect, decide, and destroy faster than a human could even react. Thus began Project Thundercloud, a secret development program initiated by Norinco and the People's Liberation Army Ground Force in 2018. Its goal? To create a network-centric tank that could operate as part of a digital combat ecosystem, linking drones, satellites, and battlefield AI into one unified system. After nearly seven years of R&D, simulation, and field testing, the Type 100 was born. Not merely a tank, but a node in China's growing system of intelligent warfare. The Type 100 represents the peak of China's armored engineering evolution. Unlike the Type 99A, which still relied heavily on crew input, the Type 100 fuses autonomy, sensor fusion, and AI-assisted targeting. At its heart lies the Dragon Sight X system, a fully integrated digital targeting suite. It uses multi-spectrum sensors, thermal, radar, LIDAR, and millimeter wave to create a 3D map of the battlefield up to 12 kilometers away. This data is shared in real time with command drones, which relay target information across the armored formation. The Type 100's gun, the 155 mm electrothermal chemical cannon marks a leap beyond traditional tank weapons. It uses plasma-assisted ignition to propel rounds at hypersonic velocity, giving it unmatched penetration at ranges exceeding 8 kilometers. That's more than double the effective range of most NATO and Russian tank guns. The autoloader is AI-controlled, reducing crew to just two, a commander and a systems operator. Both sit within a sealed crew capsule deep in the hull, protected by multi-layered composite armor and an active protection suite known as SkyGuard, capable of intercepting incoming ATGMs, top attack drones, and even small artillery shells. And most importantly, the Type 100 is equipped with its own tethered reconnaissance drone, launched from the rear of the turret. This mini UAV can climb up to 1,000 meters, scanning the battlefield and feeding live visuals back to the tank, giving it true beyond visual range engagement capability. In late 2024, the first operational battalion of Type 100s entered service with China's Northern Theater Command. Satellite imagery later confirmed training formations near the Bohai Bay region. Each Type 100 is believed to cost around 18 to 22 million US dollars, placing it among the most expensive tanks in the world, but also the most advanced. China plans to field approximately 500 units by 2030, with export variants likely under development for allies like Pakistan. Military observers believe the Type 100 will gradually replace the older Type 96 and Type 99 families, forming the backbone of China's next generation armored brigades.
let's draw the battlefield comparison. The Abrams relies on heavy armor and human decision-making. While it boasts advanced optics and battle networks, it lacks autonomous coordination and BVR targeting. The Type 100, by contrast, can detect, process, and strike before the Abrams even receives target coordinates. In a BVR scenario, the Abrams would be blind. The Leopard 2A8 features next-gen armor and digital fire control, but it's still line-of-sight dependent. The Type 100's drone-linked targeting makes it a hunter, not just a fighter. Even with superior crew training, the Leopard's survival would depend on detection, a battle it likely loses first. The Armada shares some conceptual similarities. Unmanned turret, digital control, crew capsule. But Russia's project stagnated under sanctions and funding issues. The Type 100 takes that idea and evolves it into a functioning, networked, AI-driven system that actually works in the field. In short, and where Western tanks rely on armor and Russian tanks rely on firepower, China's Type 100 relies on intelligence. It doesn't fight like a tank. It fights like a ground-based fighter jet. The Type 100's digital kill chain is what makes it terrifying. It doesn't just engage targets, it predicts them. Machine learning algorithms anticipate enemy positions based on drone data, thermal traces, and even battlefield acoustic signatures. In short, it's not a tank waiting for orders. It's a tank that learns and adapts. Western designs still focus on kinetic dominance, thicker armor, faster reloads, bigger guns. But the Type 100 has already moved to information dominance, the ability to win before the fight begins. If NATO doesn't adapt, the Abrams, Leopard, and Challenger could find themselves in the same situation as 1940s cavalry, powerful, proud, but suddenly outdated. Operationally, the Type 100 gives China unmatched first strike and survivability advantage in any ground confrontation, particularly along the Himalayan border or Taiwan's rugged terrain. Strategically, it cements China's position as the leader in AI-driven land warfare. By integrating its armored units with UAV swarms and satellite reconnaissance, the People's Liberation Army can dominate the information spectrum, the new high ground of warfare. And globally, the ripple effects are enormous. Russia will likely accelerate work on its next-gen Armada variants. The US and Europe will be forced to rethink their tank design philosophy entirely, shifting from raw armor to autonomous warfare ecosystems. This isn't just a tank revolution. It's the beginning of the post-human battlefield, where machines, networks, and algorithms define who lives and who burns. Until then, that's all for today, and thanks for watching.